Then welcome. So I'm Rochelle Wilhite, the designated broker of Best Choice Realty. And tonight we're going to be talking about some of the important updates on the horizon. And this is in regards to Washington specifically, um, but we are going to cover at the beginning slide um, a few things as far as the case with NAR. And I was fortunate to listen to one of our own Best Choice Realty agents, Tony Kasnick, who actually gave um, did a podcast just only a few days ago, and he did an excellent job. So I'm happy to um, give you guys that link on our Facebook group so you can watch that as well. Um, but just wanted to let you know that there is a lot of things going on, and I want to kind of give you some pointers and some things to think about tonight. So with that, um, if you have questions as I go through the slides, just send me a uh, make a comment. I am going to be running it and hosting it tonight. Shannon has another commitment that she had to attend to. So be kind tonight, I would say with me. If there is a question or you want to raise your hand, that would be awesome. Um, okay, let me jump right in. So with the, as many of you have heard, the Sitzer and Burnett, Burnett versus NAR, that verdict came out, 1.88 billion jury verdict home seller class action lawsuit in Missouri. So that happened, and again, mostly in Missouri, and there's a lot of MLSs and realtors that are very, very nervous out in the Midwest. On the West Coast, I'm feeling like there's less of that fear going on um, because of some of the things that our MLS has done for us over the years. So I just got done with the designated broker meeting um, with in King County. And um, these are some of the highlighted things that were discussed today. So number one, there is a, a press release that hopefully will be picked up by the Seattle Times. That is expected to probably hit the Seattle Times in the coming few days. So you probably will get more questions from maybe some of your moms and your dads and your consumers. I've already heard from my mom. I know Tony heard from his mom. So a lot of you are going to hear from your clients if you not have not heard from them already. So MLS has been getting a lot of questions. And so that's the reason they decided to go ahead and offer the press release. And that will hit most likely the Seattle Times in the coming days. So the key thing is to understand and help the consumers in our area understand that Northwest MLS, that we are not affiliated with NAR. Now, I know I have a few of you from other MLSs that are owned by NAR but you can rest assured that the documents or the forms that you're using definitely have much more protection than some of the other states and ML other MLSs that are operating. So we are very fortunate in Washington to operate with um, Northwest MLS and really specifically the forms that are associated with Northwest MLS. This MLS starts with transparency. They've always led with that and consumer choice and the opportunities to negotiate. So many of you have been able to benefit from this type of organization over the years. So just a couple highlights before we move to the next slide. 2019, there were changes to eliminate mandatory compensation. We already have been through that path in 2019. In fact, I remember going to a designated broker meeting where all kinds of brokers were raising their hands and oh my gosh, we've already kind of had that stir that frenzy that occurred back in 2019. This was before the pandemic where we allowed um, and we published, we allowed sellers to choose to pay brokers what they wanna pay. So lead with transparency. That's already something we did back in 2019. And we published all of the compensation and we called it commission back then, but nonetheless, we actually published that on all of the websites and all the internet data exchanges uh -huh. that are yeah, LS. You wanna hear it? Sorry, there we go. So um, the then the next thing that the Northwest MLS did was they did 2022, they changed the decoupling of the compensation for listing compensation. So they broke it apart in the agreement. And then 2024, they are revising the agency law, which has been needed for a very long time. In fact, that was probably needed back in the 1990s when they made some sizable changes back then. So all of this is very important, things that our MLS has done to help us and support us. And so a lot of the consumers across the nation and real estate agents who consider themselves realtors are now asking their MLSs, what are you doing for me lately? 
And what are you doing to support my business? And there's a lot of challenges going on across the nation, a lot of stir, really. So I, this is a word of caution for many of you. Be careful what you post on social media. It could come back to bite you. So don't be posting things. If you want to run it past me or you want to kind of um, say, here's what I'm going to be doing, you're certainly welcome to do that. But be careful, even in the comment section, if somebody posts something, what you say about being a realtor, what you say about the organization, what you say about your MLS, because it could come back to haunt you. So that was my word of caution for the night. <clears throat> Washington agency law. So we are going to be required to use what they call buyer brokerage service agreements. These are the uh, laws that are gonna change January 1. I've talked to a lot of um, our brokers one-on-one, -on -one, but I think this is my first opportunity to really speak to a, a wider audience, all of you. And I want you to just give you the highlights of what's coming down January 1st. It is massive. It is a very, very big deal that this is happening because we have not used these buyer brokerage service agreements or buyer agency agreements, I would see, say across the state of Washington. Um, Washington has kind of been kind of stepped aside because it has not been the state law, but that's not, doesn't mean that across other states like Idaho, like Utah, they've already had buyer agency agreements that they incorporated into the state law. So it's a big deal for us. We've always operated where we don't really put something in writing until we actually do a contract. And, I, and with this new law change, having a buyer brokerage service agreement in place before you start showing properties is the real deal. Um, in fact, if you send me a contract after January 1st and you do not have a buyer brokerage service agreement, I'm not going to be able to pay you a commission or pay your compensation because I am not instructed to do so. So that's a big deal. I don't think we, that we let that set, settle in um, or really understood that when they rolled this out a couple months ago um, at how important that um, relationship is between broker and um, buyer agent. So that's the kind of requirement and the mandatory agreement that's going to be required come January 1. So you'll want to start to look at these forms and definitely attend our next week's meeting with our attorney to understand what that buyer brokerage service agreement will look like. They did change the term from dual agent to limited dual agent. Again, I'm always a dual agent. When a, a best choice realty agent represents a buyer and when a, a best choice realty agent represents a seller. But if you guys are representing the seller and the buyer, it puts you into a limited situation as far as how you can represent both parties. So that term is going to change to limited dual agent, which actually I think will provide more clarity to the consumer. If we are going to, we already talked about requiring the buyers and sellers to separately consent. Um, so in the listing agreement and the buyer service agreement, you will get the buyer but with a simple checkbox to consent to whether they want to be represented in a limited situation. Again, this is not new to people in Idaho. Um, this is something that's already embedded into their contract. Again, we are adjusting our contracts to, again, normalize some of these relationships that are already in, in place. We also are requiring disclosure of compensation offered to the firm by another party. So I've already start to, started to see this from some of the escrow companies that are out there. Some of the escrow companies are requiring you to provide, if you're giving a rebate or offering some sort of compensation or reduction in your compensation, they're requiring full disclosure. So I'm seeing a bit more of using a form to disclose that and have the buyer and seller agree to those concessions or those types of um, compensation adjustments. So I think what, you're, what I'm seeing is that there'll be less form 40s those commission authorizations done and more where the buyer and seller are going to understand if there was a credit or if there was, say, I'm going to go ahead and kick in $500. I just had to do one of those today um, where I'm going to put that into the contract. So it's fully transparent to both the buyer and the seller. So you be prepared to see escrow companies requiring more disclosure about concessions, I would say. And then definitely the simplification and the renaming, this is going to take me a while to get used to, that is no longer called the law of agency. I've got to get used to changing that terminology, and it's now called real estate brokerage service in Washington. 
So it is a pamphlet that's called Real Estate Brokerage Service in Washington. I still have not been able to get that to roll off my roll off my mouth. So, um, so I'll kind of show you a sample of what that looks like. So five things that I am doing um, to bring more stability and just kind of like all of this. It almost feels like, like there's a lot of chaos out there. I think a lot of you may be experiencing that same kind of chaos. And so these are five things that I'm doing that I would highly encourage you to do as well that will hopefully bring more stability with all of the change that's going on. Number one, number one, I started doing this almost a year ago as I started to cut unnecessary overhead fees so that I can breathe in my personal budget. So my husband went ahead and contacted Comcast, Xfinity, whatever you want to call them, and cut back some of the things that we were spending on and definitely cut over some of the overhead of our household expenses. So when we have these types of things that are occurring, some of the things that can bring you and give breathe more kind of peace into your life is to cut some of the overhead. Some of you have cut some of your um, additional technology services, things that you may have not used. If you haven't used it, you may want to cut it. So it kind of comes into that, that realm. So number one, that's one of the things I did even in 2008 when that happened is I did cut unnecessary overhead fees so that you can breathe. And what that means to me is that we are doing really well at Best Choice Realty because many real estate agents are doing number one in their own personal business and realizing, oh my gosh, I am paying way too much at my current firm. I'm giving them way too much of a percentage. And why? Our brokerage model sells much better in a recession than it actually does in a, in a really, really fast market because we've already We've already cut the fees back for a lot of our brokers um, by providing services and not discounting. Um, you are able to retain a lot more of your hard earned money by working for a company like Best Choice, where we have already naturally cut some of the overhead for you um, by not taking a split. So um, rest assured, our numbers are looking very good. We had our one of our best Octobers ever at Best Choice. And record numbers in recruiting. We recruited 23 people last month. Um, that's also a record in October. So we welcome some of the people from other companies, and we're very excited to know that we're working for a company that has already that's already cut unnecessary overhead fees so that you can breathe. Number two, you want to get experience with the new forms and definitely understand how to do a, bu a buyer consultation. I don't. We've been in stressing that for quite a while now but it's probably very important that you do that. Um, there also is an FAQ. I wouldn't say it's more of an FAQ. It's more of a pamphlet that you can get ahead of this and you can provide that in your consultation with your buyers. I'll show you where you can find that on the MLS in a minute. Um, number three, that's what I would do. And then number four, definitely use net sheets with your sellers. I don't want to see sellers like, why am I paying this? And what am I paying this for? And all of that. Net sheets pretty pretty clearly explain where does, how much is the buyer agent making? How much is the seller agent making? How much is excise tax? And I always like to point out that excise tax, our, our lovely state um, will take a tax and they're not doing any kind of, um, I mean, they, they do a different type of service, I would say, than what we typically do here in our firm. So they make a, a big percentage as well. And so that sometimes offsets that conversation that you have uh, you know, hey, we got to pay the buyer's agent. We got to pay the seller's agent. We've got to pay some of these fees to market your property, um, and you might as well explain the taxes and do that in the form of a net sheet. I think that's probably the easiest way that I can explain compensation is using the actual numbers on a net sheet. And then number five, buyers and sellers will work with people that know, like, and trust you. So you need to be memorable. And you do need to make some phone calls, just like we did during the pandemic. Many of you weathered the pandemic very well. In fact, the pandemic was some of your best years. And the reason it was, was because you followed number five, the tip I'm giving here, which is go after people that know, like, and trust you. Talk with them about the changes that are happening and get their feedback and start to engage them in what their plans are for their investments. Um, I just took the challenge. Some of you are taking the challenge right now of talking to 20 people, you know, and trying to stir up some activity in your personal databases. But I can tell you that the agents that are actually stirring things up in their databases are actually out there showing homes to their buyers 
and there are listings that are being done um, because of lifestyle changes. So one way or another, if the compensation adjusts or if it doesn't adjust or if you keep it the same, it doesn't really matter because people are still going to be buying and selling mm -hmm. using a consultant. <laughs> Okay, so the forms revisions, this is this is directly from the MLS meeting that I went to today. So they are updating all of these forms. So they will have their own buyer brokerage service agreement. They will have another listing agreement. I will assure you our listing agreement will be much easier to use. Um, the purchase and sale agreement, all of the purchase and sale agreement got they got revised because of the new terminology. And any disclosure compensation in any form was amended to make the adjustments for these changes. The things that were removed was the buyer agency agreements that they had. So 41A that they had there has been removed. And they also removed sub-agency. So that's being removed as well. You'll notice that in our listing agreement next week, you'll see that there is a place to, if you wanted to co-list with somebody, we made that very easy in our agreement to place that name in the document. So there's no need really for sub-agency when you have that um, additional fill-in field, as well as the kind of limited um, agency that we're going to discuss going forward. Some new handouts that will be available. There actually is a new handout for tenants. Some of you are investors, so you definitely want to pay close attention to that on the MLS. You will be required to give the tenant, if you're going to be managing your own properties, you are requi required to give them a service agreement as well. So you're not exempt just because you handle your own properties or your own you know, tenants. You do have to engage with your tenants in that way as well. There was an amendment that was created, 41A. There is a tenant brokerage service agreement, that's 41T. You'll wanna use that 41T. We, will not we don't do property management at Best Choice Realty for others. So we didn't spend the money to have our attorney draft that. So if you are going to be managing your own properties, you're going to want to look at 41T. And then that compensation disclosure agreement, if there is credits or things like that, that will be getting a change as well. 42C is what you'll be using for that. So a lot of changes are coming out and that's what's happening on January 1. So a lot of training was going to happen between now and January 1. I did hear from the MLS that they are going to go ahead and create a recorded video that sums up, if you are not able to attend some of their trainings, they will be putting together a recorded um, video that you can watch to understand like 42C, 41T and things of that nature. <clears throat> so a couple other things off the Northwest MLS, there's new interface and improvements. This is mobile app. If you have not downloaded the mobile app, it's very, very cool. They did like an exercise and they had all the designated brokers raise their hand in the room of designated brokers who are using the mobile app. And pretty much I would say 90% of the brokers are using the NWMLS mobile app because they are making significant updates. They're making updates to parcel and lot dimensions that will be visible, office information, um, the supplements will be available on the app. So, and the hot sheets, a lot of coming soon things. Definitely check um, the weekly. They send a weekly email if you want to know what updates they're doing to the mobile app. But a lot of improvements being done over the next couple months for that. Also, a quick reminder, if you didn't jump on a little bit ago, um, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the realtor.com arrangement. They did sign a new agreement with realtor.com. Again, we're not owned by realtor.com, but we do want to um, showcase our listings on those on that website that's highly trafficked across the nation. So you do have the ability to create your own realtor.com profile. I went ahead and started the, the profile and you can create your own, just like you can on Zillow.com and some of those other profile websites like Facebook and LinkedIn and things of that nature. You may also want to go onto realtor.com and create a profile there as well. They did go ahead and agree to um, a display type of offering for all of our brokers here on the West side. So this was kind of a fun one I just wanted to end with. Um, let's see here, let's check my time out. It's like I have less time. So these were, this was kind of fun. I'll teach you a new trick if you have not learned this on Northwest MLS. These are all the things that you can search for. I don't know if you knew that you could search for a bidet, but there are 13 active properties with a bidet, and I'll show you how to look for, for that. 
maybe your client wants to look for a secret room. I don't know. After all the changes going on, maybe they want to find a secret room that they can go and hide in. Um, so there's a way to search for that. There's actually six active properties on the MLS now, and there's 294 sold. Heated driveway. I don't know who's looking for a heated driveway out there, but maybe the people over there that are getting some a lot of weather and snow. A recording studio. There's actually one active property. So, and copper countertops, Shannon and I were both laughing. We're like, no wonder there's nothing active. Nobody wants a co copper countertop. Um, but these are some things that some re weird requests that you may get from your buyers. And there is a way to search for those things on the Northwest MLS. Now yes. we can. There Thanks. we go. Thank you. So you go here to search, you go here to general. Down below, a lot of these searching is marketing broker remarks. This is where you plug in the star 1031. And there you go. And I got to put in active. I want to see anything active that's sold. There's four matches. Click search. And here they are. So there's one in the beach. This one right here, it says buyer agrees to participate with seller's 1031 exchange at no cost to buyer. So very motivated. A 1031 exchange, they have certain timelines. So that's probably the reason why they dropped the price. So this might be a good one for a buyer who's looking to actually um, score a deal. And so that would be an interesting one to put to my investor who's looking to pick up a 1031 exchange and use his 1031 exchange money to buy something, another investment of an equal or greater value. So, um, so it's pulling the data in from the marketing remarks into that. Before I go, um, the other thing I want to show you on the MLS would be down below uh, here, you've got revised agency law and MLS forms. You can read more this button right here. And this is where you have to click the button. You can review it. You can see the samples. But on the right-hand side, you are wanting to go and get that downloadable you know, information about um, the renters. You can say you have a property that you're managing yourself. Um, there's a handout, important information for prospective renters about the change. There you go. These are the key revisions to the agency law and what to keep in mind. And then they can see the revised agency pamphlet and the, the bill that was approved, the substitute Senate Bill 5191. So that's where you can find the P8. The other one is P7. So I would probably, you can download this right now, tonight. And this is what I would start to encourage you to use when you meet with a buyer is use this important information for home buyers because it's giving them all the new information about why we're doing the law agents law of agency changed in Washington and the key revisions and then also the pamphlet that they can download and the law that was enacted. So this information can easily, it's just like a, a nice PDF, the flyer that you can download right from the MLS and that's where you find it. Um, I think, and then you've got your revised agency pamphlet. This is what you guys are gonna see on January 1. I will say it's less pages, so I'm happy about that. <laughs> only four pages and they made it easier on the eyes but this is the the top the title of the pamphlet now um and it I guess i guess it is easier on the eyes here with some nice house bullets here written service agreement talks about that buyers brokers duty to all parties um what their duties are to the buyer and seller they've made this easy for us to translate into other languages um, and also to explain compensation short sales so it's four pages and it will be effective January 1 through um, the end of time, probably. After they do this change, I don't think they're going to want to change anything for a very long time. Um, but four pages, much, much better. Any questions? I'm right at six o'clock and I talked like a speed demon, so I apologize. Go ahead and unmute your line if you have a question. Candace, did you have anything I need to cover? Oh, I got some, I've got some chats I got to get through. I saw one question in the chat that was, um, is this buyer agency form initiated in connection to the NAR uh, compensation lawsuit? It's not in conjunction. It just happens to be something that was rolled out. And it just happens. To, we, I mean, we got ahead of this way back in 2019 before even the pandemic. So it's it really in response to the changes that had to be made to compensation and the reviews. Um, so it, it doesn't have anything to do with NAR, but, you know, it does kind of coincide a lot with what's going on. And, and again, more consumer awareness. 
of what's going on out across the nation. So it's something you, you've got to be aware of um, and how to talk to it. Awesome. And then one more is, is the tenant handout just for agents who have rentals or is this for um, owners of rental properties? It is owners of rental properties. Completely. Okay. In whole. So not just agents that have rental properties, but also owners of rental properties. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. That would be a good question. We ask um, our attorney next week. He would know the answer to that. He has a whole tenant, a landlord tenant uh, division in his law firm. So um, that's a great question. We'll need to table that till next week. Awesome. And it looks like that was it. But if there is anybody that had anything, please don't hold your breath. I can send this out to, in fact, I'll go ahead and send this out to all of you. Um, some of you that are part of um, SAR or Spokane don't have access to this, I don't believe, easily. So I will go ahead and send this off to you guys. Um, in the Spokane area, we have several brokers that are now over there. So I'll get you guys access to that. And then definitely jump on our Monday night a webinar with our attorney who will be going over our specific listing, for, listing forms and buyer service forms. Quick question. Um, mm -hmm. The last flyer that you show here, the one that's showing the real estate brokerage in Washington, this is replacing then the, the blue and white one? That Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It will no longer be blue and white. It's going to be like this this green color. I guess <laughs> it's definitely, we've, we're going green with less paper too, Abby. <laughs> yes. So no more of the, um, you're going to continue to use it till the end of the year and then it will retire and this will be the new one that will be effective January 1. So they'll remove it from Northwest MLS and you will no longer see the, the blue one. Thank you. Okay, great question. Rochelle, you just said that the meeting with the attorney is on Monday. Did you mean Wednesday? No, it's on Monday. Next Monday night, we have a meeting with our attorney. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. 5.30 yeah. to 6.30. So that also answers Aria's question. We will have next Monday at 5.30. Buyer, yes. And the, that video learning more about buyer broker exclusive agreement form. We'll have the attorney go over that form next Monday with all of you. And then I'm sure we will have questions and we'll have to kind of work with it. How do you properly use the buyer and how do we how do we use that in conjunction with a consultation? And what are the common questions that a lot of you guys are hearing or what are some of the situations that you encounter? Again, I'm anticipating that we will have quite a bit of education or training um, in early part of next year in regards to that. So we're prepared for that, Aria, as far as preparing to train you guys on the proper use and how to effectively answer people's questions when they don't wanna sign an agreement. Um, I think I'll give you a, another sneak or another cool thing I learned today that I have to make one more adjustment with our attorney. You guys will have, there's going to be a, a change in Northwest MLS, their rules, Remember, we only had 30 days before we could effectively go active on the market. They are going to be extending that. That rule got approved. So you will have 90 days. And oh, we still can't, we still can't um, market, advertise during that 90 day period, but that will give you guys some more breathing room. I know myself, I have estate sales that I deal with a lot and it's super, super frustrating to have to get extension after extension. So that will be, it will be 90 days in the contract. So that's very exciting. I think that's that you it. will be pleased about that. That's awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Those are some really good ones tonight. Candace, anything else that we wanted to cover? No, I just hope that I can see as many faces in person on Wednesday. We have got, we've got a lot of people coming. So I'm excited for that. And we can really, um, understand some of the programs that I think you guys are, are going to be able to see out there in the coming months. Every lender seems like they have a program for something. Right. So <laughs> we need to have a better understanding of how that's going to go. Um, all right. Well, we'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for jumping on. Have a great week. That's how we keep it short and sweet.